All right, let's get this started. This should be easy enough, right? What the heck is that? Whoa, what? Huh? Everything's upside down. Wait, what if I... What happens if... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. In today's video, we survived a hundred days in Minecraft, but upside down. The goals are to build a functional house, craft a full set of diamond armor, and slay the ender dragon. Can we survive with these conditions? Watch till the end of the video to find out. Also, we're inches away from 50k, which means this is your last chance to join the before 50k club. Finally, make sure to like the video for the YouTube algorithm. Let's get straight into it. Day one, we spawned in and looked around our surroundings. I wanted to find some trees as soon as possible, but lo and behold, we were underneath a cliff. Honestly, not the best thing that could have happened to us, but I wasn't going to let it get to me. And just as I say that, I fall into a hole. But listen up, it's not the worst thing that could have happened to us. Lo and behold, it actually brought us to some trees, which is kind of one of the first steps to any 100 day series. So it was honestly a dub. Whoa, yikes, I almost fell into the void there. We started collecting wood by simply beating the heck out of trees. We were there for a while. It was a very peculiar sight looking at the trees upside down in minecraft it was just something about it was just wrong a bit of an interesting thing to note is that items don't actually fall down they fall upwards and that's kind of technically their down but not ours so this was a little bit confusing to me at first as well but eventually i got used to it in terms of food i didn't have much but luckily one of the trees dropped an apple and it came straight upwards that actually helped out a bit i also realized some of the trees that i was fully breaking they started losing their leaves from that very moment i stopped taking all of the logs from trees this is because i wanted to keep the leaves and honestly i didn't need to take all of it there was plenty of it going around already i didn't actually waste any time i went straight to mining because i wanted to upgrade to stone tools as soon as possible as any regular person should right we got quite a bit of cobblestone and we were set for an entire set of stone tools when leaving the mine that we made i then soon came to realize that even the animals are upside down so they're actually on the ceiling which made them 10 times harder to even kill or even obtain their loot from because if you kill one and there's no platform underneath their items will quite literally descend into the void that's not good but on the bright side i did manage to find some out in the open coal so that was a bit useful shortly afterwards i noticed that there's a pig above us i wanted to try killing it i wanted to see how difficult it actually would have been luckily for us it was in the water it was supposed to be a lake, but obviously it's above our heads and gravity works differently for the world. So it was really peculiar to see right above our heads. At this moment, I had a bit of a theory because water denies any gravity effect at all. It just puts you into the direction that you want to be in. So I was wondering, what if I dip my head into the water? Would I be able to swim in it potentially? Not having to have anything underneath my feet. So we gave that a shot despite how risky it was. And we were right. It did work like that. The only downside to it is that you drowned. So there was a bit of a setback and we couldn't overly utilize that. It wasn't that overpowered to be honest. It also assisted in me collecting these pork chops. So you don't see me complaining. I used the coal and wood that we had to make some torches just so we had a little bit of lighting. I went mining again. Another thing to note is that instead of mining downwards to get to Y equals 11, we have to go upwards because the whole world's upside down. So diamonds are above our head, not below us anymore. This is a very strange thing to bear in mind. It didn't take too long before we found our first vein of iron ore. I was very satisfied with this. We didn't really need that much to begin with, either way. As long as we had an iron pickaxe, we were good to go. An interesting thing that could be noted is during the duration of time when we were looking for these ores, I also managed to find this purple ore. Now I'm not sure what it was because we didn't have the iron smelted. So in my head, I was like, okay, I'm not even that far deep. So a stone tool should be able to mine this, seeing as it spawns somewhat near the surface, right? Nope, I was completely wrong. I completely wasted whatever ore that was, and I wasn't able to mine it because me being a moron, decided to mine it with a stone pickaxe. Good job, Adrian. By the time we were done mining, I then came back up to the surface to see that it already became nighttime. I was looking around for a couple mobs, but I also found a couple more pigs. I was considering it. I was like, hey, so either I can slaughter them and get limited time food, or I can make them into a farm. The answer is quite simple, but that's a problem for future me. I wanted a reliable source of blocks because I was going to do some exploring. I wanted to see some of the other biomes and how they look like upside down. So I just simply decided to mine some of the dirt that was underneath the cliff, because why the heck not? Who else is going to use it? Not me. My first tactic that I wanted to use, instead of actually having to bridge the places, I wanted to use a bit of the ocean. 
But I soon realized that was a bad idea because we could drown. I did attempt it though, but decided to turn right back and start smelting some of my iron. Days 2 to 5. Rise and shine, we were straight to work. I started bridging over and I wanted to explore a little bit more of these lands. Maybe even potentially finding a cave or two. That would be kind of nice. Or even a lava pool. That could get us to the nether. There were quite a few things we can honestly find in this trip and I didn't have too many expectations. I also wanted to try finding a village because I really wanted to see what that would look like. Like imagine a bunch of upside down villagers, that would be a funny sight. During this it was honestly a lot of traversing. I probably would have been able to go a lot faster if one, this upside down thing wasn't that disorienting and two, I didn't risk the fact that if I fall, I die. So I took my time, honestly did. I didn't want to die. It didn't take too long to leave the oak biome, then to be introduced to the spruce biome. Now the thing I like about the spruce biome is that the trees are sometimes different elevations. That means that there's a little bit more variety in this than the oak trees that we were, you know, facing before. It was like a little challenge. And that very biome, we also encounter our very first sheep. This is important because we needed beds and we needed quite a bit of them. One, if we were going to kill the ender dragon, we were definitely going to need beds. And two, we just need a bed to sleep on. Like, come on. Oh, and did I mention we got attacked by a zombie? Yeah, it could barely touch me, but we still killed it. So we're taking the W on this one. Day 6 to 10. In this duration of time, we were honestly still going through a bunch of the spruce trees. There were a whole bunch, but I also decided to collect some wood from it because wood is kind of crucial. And I didn't want to make some ugly looking house. I wanted a bit of block differentiation and oak to spruce wood now that's kind of a good differentiation in my opinion you know i'm not much of an interior designer but i think that was a good choice oh and a bit of an interesting thing in between us finding the spruce biome i also managed to find a little bit of a desert biome at first i thought it was just an ordinary beach but now that i look into it a little bit more i'm pretty sure it is a desert biome but it's just a very small desert biome very compact I also used up a little bit of time looking for shipwrecks and stuff underneath the water. I didn't get any luck, but I definitely kept my eyes peeled. I decided to head back after all of this adventuring because I wanted to settle down a bit. I wanted to get a bit more iron so I could get a full set of iron armor and maybe even potentially some diamonds. Days 11 to 15. By this time we managed to make it back to spawn, which I will be making a base at actually. I'm still collecting some resources for it. But once we got back, I definitely wanted to go diamond mining and that's exactly what I did. I decided strip mining upwards, not downwards, but upwards until I reach y equals 11. In the midst of that, I also managed to encounter some lava. At first I didn't realize or take into consideration how severe of a situation this really was until I broke the piece that was in the way between me and burning to a crisp. I removed it and then saw how the lava worked so I decided to place it right back and decided to go in a different direction which was probably for the best. Eventually we did make it to bedrock with no luck mining any diamonds. So instead of that, instead of just you know leaving it all up to chance, I was going to actually use y equals 11 and start mining in one direction. Also saw we were low so I decided to cook up some of the food. Ya yeah, boy's munching bruh, ya yeah, boy's gotta munch, what can I say? Not a lot of luck with diamonds so I decided to head straight back out. Day 16 to 20. I was in a bit of an adventurous mood, so I wanted to explore the lands, which is also why I did it at nighttime. Lo and behold, on our way back to the platform end that we actually built up to, I got attacked by a skeleton. Luckily for us, it was no match for us, not to mention I had a shield now. Yeah, boys cracked at the craft. Y'all heard it first. I kept my head up. I wasn't going to give in to defeat. I wanted to find a village so badly. But in the midst of everything, I did notice that there were a couple sheep alone by themselves on an island. And I don't know what clicked in my head, but I wanted to kind of make a sheep farm. I guess you could say it's unlimited wool, but very low conditions. I created a little bit of a pit. And yes, that is exactly where I decided to place the sheep at. I also came into the realization that the floor was made out of stone. So I quickly changed that up instantly to blocks of dirt that'll hopefully transfer back into some normal grass blocks. That would be much appreciated. Alas, the sheep farm was made. There was a bit of a flaw to this plan and that was simply because of the fact that we didn't have food to feed the sheep. That was a little bit of a problem. We decided to explore some more because I still wanted to find that village and if we did, we could have had that upper boost 
because they offer seeds in the first place in their chests, on their crops, and a whole bunch of variety as well. So that's what I was on the search for. That is honestly what took up most of this time as well. Days 21 to 30. We kept going on and on. It was honestly an endless loop of a bunch of nothing. There was nothing. There was no structures. There was actually just nothing. I would just kept going. Now, if you guys have been here for a while, you'll know that my luck is kind of atrocious. Well, up until now, that is. I guess a good way to word this is Mojang heard my complaints and finally bless your boy with a village. That's what I'm saying. Now, let me tell you, the house is here. <laughs> oh my gosh. They were some of the most goofiest looking houses I've seen in a hot minute. This stuff looked horrendous. In the midst of checking out the village, I also came to the realization that one of the houses there could actually become a farm of mine. I didn't want to leave the farm out in the open because of mobs and it was a little harder to make upside down fences, which I feel like would have been a little bit, you know, on the strange side. So instead I decided to go into one of these houses and make a farm in it. The one house that I decide to actually use is the same house that two villagers are in the corner making out. That's honestly not what I had in mind when I was thinking about villager upside down interactions. This just felt like an intrusion of privacy. So we do some house makeover. I put some dirt, slap it onto the ground, and I also wanted to get a bit of an infinite water source. That's exactly what we needed. Oh, and yeah, I kind of buried the villagers in dirt. That's for their safe creeping, I promise. I had to make a couple trips because we didn't have that much dirt, not to mention I still need to bring over back the infinite water source. Days 31 to 40. It took a little bit of time, but eventually I managed to get all the resources and the placements down right. Or so I thought. After looking into it a bit, I realized that even tools work upside down. So if I were to hoe the ground, I would need to hoe the bottom side of the dirt block. That was something I just didn't have access to at the moment, so I had to remove all of the progress we just did and make it on the ceiling. Well, my ceiling, not the ceiling that we're standing on right now. You guys get the point, you guys get the point. Afterwards, I decided to go back outside and grab a couple more seeds to plant into the farm. Smart idea, I, the more food the better, and the more wheat the better for breeding sheep. So honestly, it was just a win-win situation for about all of us really. Except for the villagers trapped in the corner. Well, that's it's kind of their problem. Anyways, I also spent some of this time collecting a little bit more spruce wood for the final house I'm going to be making for this series. Definitely was not going to be living in one of these lame villager houses, that's for sure. Some of the materials that I needed for this was also back at the base, so we had to make a quick run there and all the way back. And that took, that took a while. I was not happy that that was even in consideration, but it's whatever. I'm also not gonna lie, some of these villager trades aren't even that bad. Like if you find a decent way of converting everything properly, you probably could do it in a day or two. Days 41 to 45. I was happy with the state of condition I was in. I had two fully functional farms that went hand in hand. One provides me with wheat which we so need, and the second one provides me with sheep. Honestly, I think we were set in that department, so I went right back to spawn, aka where I was gonna place my base, right? Once I finally reached the base once again, I also decided to start smelting some of the cobblestone. I didn't have much to smelt it with, so I decided to smelt it with some lovely charcoal or even wood itself. So without all was all happening, I decided to clear out a little bit of the area. This was exactly where I wanted my house to be. I also started terraforming the area a little bit just to make it look a little bit more nicer and more appealing to the eyes. I care about that, okay? I wanted the corners to be spruced and maybe even the roof itself, but the walls were definitely going to be oak. Again, I feel like this is a really good combination, but y'all can tell me otherwise in the comment section below if you want to let me know what kind of preferred type of house would you guys build, and what kind of color palette would it be? Days 46 to 55. The house overall was coming together. All that I needed left was the flooring and some glass. I needed windows for sure, but the flooring was one of the things that was a little bit more important at that time. I went outside of the house. The beginning intentions was to go mining, but instead I decided to just scout out little areas, I guess. I'm not sure exactly what I was doing for this portion, but I came right back around to the house and decided to mine up the floor. That way, we already have an open space for us to plop in any block of our choice. The flooring that I decided was stone bricks, and the glass was put into place. Luckily for us, the second biome that we encountered was the desert, in between the spruce biome and the biome that we're in right now, which is just a normal oak forest biome. 
Uh, at least that's what I call it. After this, I continued my search for a cave. I wanted another cave system and I wanted to go mining. I needed a bit more iron, you know, in case my tools broke. And so that's exactly what I did. Except I didn't know exactly where to mine. So I started walking around a little bit and tried looking for some open caves again. I thought that I missed a couple maybe because I wasn't paying too close attention. So I started walking around a bit but eventually gave up on my search. I decided to just mine into one of these mountains and mine straight upwards. On the way up we got ourselves some lovely iron so that was a bit of a plus. But no cave in sight so that was kind of pain. Despite all of this on our way up we eventually hit a mine shaft. Now this isn't a cave. But honestly, this is probably better than a cave. A mineshaft could have chests and a bunch of other stuff like that. Not to mention could possibly even lead us to lava pools, which we needed. We start exploring a bit. I decide to mine some of the iron there and some coal, you know, because those are kind of two crucial and very important things. We find tons of other ores and we start exploring a little bit. While traversing across these horrid lands, the, yeah, I mean the mineshafts, I ended up finding a poisonous spider. Not exactly the most optimal thing to find down here, especially in hardcore mode. I was, it was not a fun experience whatsoever. We don't even have armor yet, so that just made things so much worse. It poisoned me, but luckily we were able to escape it. We didn't die to it, luckily. Now this mine shaft was actually very extensive. I was probably going hundreds of blocks all over the place. But eventually, we found ourselves diamonds out in the open for us to see. This made things a lot easier. Though it wasn't much, it definitely probably saved me some time. Just normal strip mining for these silly diamonds, to be honest. I decided to make a little bit of a smelting station there for not only some of our iron, but also some other resources. We start smelting it away because I definitely needed some armor. I was not going to survive this without any armor whatsoever. And that probably should have been one of the most important things. After some further exploration, we then find out that not too nearby the place we entered the mineshaft from was actually a lava pool. This was big. This meant that we could actually go to the nether. We need to go to the nether to get some blaze rods because, you know, we were going to beat the ender dragon. That's one of the goals. This was honestly one of the weirdest things I've ever done because the portal was quite literally upside down. I, it was, it was weird, okay? We kind of messed it up in the beginning, but eventually we fixed it up. A little bit of the long route we took on this one, but you know what? Another portal is another portal, okay? If it gets the job done, then I don't want to hear any complaints. Days 56 to 65, we decided to head back up. I wasn't going to stay there for any longer because... I didn't have food. If another spider pulled up on me, I would have been a goner. Once we arrived back to our base, we decided to put some of our stuff and materials inside of the chest. I needed a bit of space because what if I collected some interesting resources from there? There are chests in the nether and that was exactly what I was hoping on. Not to mention, I needed a bit more free space than one empty inventory slot. In this interval of time, we also spent a little bit of time pig hunting. Eventually, we got a suffice amount of food and headed back straight into the mine shaft to fully go into the nether. I also took a little bit of time collecting gravel, well not gravel in specific, but the flint from the gravel, which is the important part, and used that to make a flint and steel. Then we were off, out of this upside down dimension to the next upside down dimension. Right off the bat, we were off. We went in search for some very interesting stuff, but the first thing I did notice was that glowstone was at the bottom of the nether instead of the top. That was such a weird thing to see. Not to mention the lava pool, instead of flowing top to bottom, it flowed bottom to top. So that was also a very interesting sight. During the exploration period of this time, we also got attacked by a ghast. But luckily for us, we were kind of cracked at the crap. So, you know, obviously, it had nothing on us. Yeah, boy, it was crap. I'm not sure why, but I guess you could say for decorative purposes, I also decided to mine some of this quartz. I didn't know what I needed for, but it was also, you know, a way we could get EXP, so if we ever need it in the future, you know, we got EXP. And we got some white blocks, so. If you guys didn't get the memo yet, we're not actually playing on 1.16. The version of Minecraft that we're playing on right now is 1.12, because that's what the mod version is. So we had to comply with the mod version. There's no bastions or anything, not to mention there aren't any ruined portals, or those crazy cool nether biomes. So we were, you know, just using the default Minecraft nether. This honestly didn't bother me too much, but the one thing that did bother me was my garbage luck. There, there wasn't any of it. It was just red blocks after more red blocks after more red blocks. No variety. We were just going through the vast nether that we were stuck in. Honestly, it got a little tedious. 
Eventually, after all of that walking, we finally found ourselves the nether castle day 66 to 75 in this duration of time we honestly just tried not to get ourselves killed because there were still wither skeletons and if you guys didn't know wither skeletons are kind of the bane of my existence in speedruns or even these 100 day series they are horrible horrible creatures i hate them honestly with the burning passion i hate them they suck the situation escalated and we had to evacuate because of these super harsh conditions. I wasn't gonna die to no blazes, so we just booked it. We did the dash on them. I was at this point thinking of ways around it. I could have mined a bunch of blocks and potentially block ourselves in with one of the blazes, but I'd also be risking a lot of time and a lot of our life because those blazes honestly hurt. Not to mention, just in general, we weren't doing too good on the blocks either, so that was a bit of a problem. We'd have to mine all of it out. We didn't even need that many blaze rods. In all honesty, we only needed a couple. Probably like 12 to 16 maybe. We didn't need that many. But even so, the situation was very, very risky. Instead, my conclusion was, you know, rather than fighting the blazes that were in a really bad optimal condition, why not just walk around the fortress itself? They spawn around the fortress, so that's exactly what I did. I just started walking around the places and killing blazes. Pretty simple and straightforward stuff, not to mention we utilized their spawning. After one spawn, we decided to leave a little bit further than the, you know, chunks around the place, just so they can respawn. And that honestly helped out a ton too, because if we already explored one part, we can just leave the area just to come back and find more blazes. But obviously there's also more wither skeletons, so you know, that was a kind of a that was kind of a risky factor of that plan, but honestly, we pulled through. Once I managed to get enough blaze rods, I really didn't need a reason to be there anymore. All I needed left was probably just the Endermen. We went straight back to the overworld. A fun little thing that happened on our way there is I tried using a boat. My first one disappeared, but my second one didn't work at all because I couldn't place it on the floor. That's because it only places above us, so I didn't really see much of a use in it unless I wanted to make a travel system where I just go around right clicking boats. I don't think I want to set anything like that up. <laughs> Alas, we were back into the upside down overworld. I looked around the mineshaft a little because it was just a little bit of time since we were last here. Day 76 to 80. It didn't take us too long to leave the mineshaft. Then we started heading back home. We also stored a bunch of the items that we received from the nether into the chest at our house. It also didn't take us too long to then realize that we should have probably checked on the farm that we had. And no, not the normal farm, but the sheep farm that we set up because I still needed wool to kill the ender dragons since that's the material that beds were made out of. So we went and headed back straight to kind of near the village area. I still can't get over how funny this looks when traveling across the world through bridges and upside down trees. It's honestly the funniest thing. It's been a while since we last visited there, so I kind of took a wrong turn. And instead of heading over to the sheep farm, I ended up at the normal farm by the village. I'm like, you know what? We might as well check it out because we're here anyways. Fortunately for us, some of the wheat there grew. So I decided to break some of them because we were going to need some if we wanted to reproduce some of the sheep in preparation to killing the ender dragon. By the way, before anyone, you know, complains about it, we did keep the villagers in the corner. And it wasn't really for these 100 days that I needed them. But if I do make a I survive 200 days on upside down Minecraft, that's kind of what it's meant for. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, boy thinking long term, not short term. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little confused at this portion too. There was two paths. So one went further on into the wilderness and the other one went straight back to my house and potentially to the sheep farm. And I was kind of confused. I'm not even joking here. I started walking in circles. I really didn't know where I was going. Eventually, we did decide to pick one spot, realized that wasn't the way to go, so we turned right back around, heading towards our house, but soon realized the little extension that led us to the sheep farm. After a while, we finally reached the sheep farm. There they were, in boats, just chilling. I removed the boats because obviously we were going to need to do some breeding. I decided to breed them for a bit. I also made a few extensions because we were going to need quite a few sheep and we needed a little bit more space for them so they don't start suffocating within each other. Yes, this is a genuine issue. It happens. 
all right after producing a couple more and getting a couple more sheep from the wild into the pen we then started shearing the mass reproduced sheep now this wasn't too many sheep but it did take a while finding the different colored sheep i didn't know why but i don't know it was just something i wanted to do i found one out in the wild and i decided to attract it all the way over here which is kind of a pain by the way but at the end of the day, we did manage to get quite a bit of wool. Days 81 to 90. In this duration of time, we also set out to get some more food. This was simply because I wanted to go back into the mines and go diamond mining. This was pretty straightforward, but your boy wanted some full diamond armor. I was not going into the nether without diamond armor, or at least a little bit of diamond armor. We didn't need that much. This took quite a bit of time, but in all honesty, I think it was my mining level. Like, I don't believe I got the mining level right. I thought I was at Y equals 11, you know, but since it's upside down, it was a little weird. So I'm not exactly sure. But after we collected a couple diamonds that we managed to find and, you know, scounge up, we moved on straight to the next task. And one of the final tasks we need to complete in order to get ourselves to the stronghold, Ender Pearls. Yes, we need a lot of those. To simply put it, we just went around the mineshaft. There were a couple open spaces as well, and there were quite a few Endermen down here. I was not going to trust myself fighting Endermen out in the open when the sky was literally something that we can drop into. So instead, the mines were definitely a lot safer than anything else we could have done. Surprisingly, we actually found quite a few down here. One Enderman, two Endermen, three Endermen, you get the point. Your boy was on an Enderman killing rampage. Tough to beat him, I guess. After our trip to the mines, we then head straight out of the mines, crafted a full set of diamond armor, and merged the lovely blaze powder that we had and the pearls that we collected from the mine shaft. Now that we have some Eye of Enders, it was time to put those Eye of Enders to use. Days 91 to 96. I decided to right click it and found the direction that we needed to go into. <laughs> Again, it's still so funny seeing the ender pearl or the eye of ender in this situation instead of going upwards It went straight downwards. I was planning on going straight away But I also wanted to be a little bit more secure on food I knew that my luck wasn't the best so this trip might actually take quite a bit So I wanted to be well prepared before fighting the ender dragon So we went back to our sheep farm got the last remaining pieces of wool I can possibly get from the sheep and murdered them in cold blood. I also decided to cook him, which was pretty self-explanatory because I was not going to be eating a bunch of raw lamb chops. Yeah, that wasn't going to happen. And this is where the painful process began. The process that took multiple breaks because I had to go right back, gather some more cobblestone, break a bunch of my normal stone pickaxes in order to get some materials so I had enough to bridge. But I decided to follow the direction that the initial pearl went into. Wasn't sure if there was any specific way to get there, but I honestly just, I just went in a singular direction and hoped that eventually, once I felt like it was the right time, I would throw another pearl. After going on and on and on and on and on and on and on, we finally managed to get a bit of a turn. With the Eye of Ender, of course. Lo and behold, we were in the stronghold. This took quite a bit actually traversing through, but eventually we managed to find the portal frame. When getting there, I also came to the realization that we didn't have a lot of wood. So what I basically did was I went right back up and started mining some of the trees nearby. It didn't take too long and eventually we came right back down. Seeing the end portal upside down was so peculiar to me. It was honestly thumbnail material, so you probably see it in the thumbnail. Pretty straightforward stuff, but after putting all the Eye of Enders in, we decided to leap into the portal. Now listen up, I am not joking when I say that this was by far one of the hardest Ender Dragon fights I've ever had to deal with. And let me show you exactly why. Upon entering, instead of mining upwards, we had to go downwards. Because guess what? The end itself was also upside down, which meant the pillars were upside down, which meant we had to scale downwards to even get to the the crystals. To put it simple, we had to get to the lowest pillar, and from the lowest pillar, it allowed us to get to every other pillar and destroy the crystals for it. One crystal, two crystal, three crystal, and we just kept going until every single one except the lowest crystal was destroyed. Days 97 to 100. The issue with the lowest crystal is we couldn't go underneath it. That was a bit of a problem. We did all of this while the dragon was swooping around, not to mention throwing its dumb dragon breath. As you can probably tell, we've spent a lot of food and honestly, around 50 to 75% of it was taken out by the dragon breath. At that very moment, I thought of a very interesting plan. 
We grabbed the diamond pickaxe and started mining into the pillar itself. We did this up until the point where we were right above the crystal itself. What I decided to do was I decided to bed bomb that very crystal instead of hitting it manually because there was no way for us to hit it manually. And boom, there it goes. Now comes the second most aggravating and hardest thing on the list. Getting to the middle of the end so we can actually kill the ender dragon. We had to go upwards but not too far up. We had to perfectly maneuver our way into the place itself. It honestly didn't take too long, but we did take some pretty heavy hits, and eventually we managed to mine right back up to the top of the end, where in, you know, this case is actually the bottom of the end, but it's the top for us because we're upside down. I went over there to strategize, and honestly, I had a bit of a plan. The shield was one of the most important things of this plan, because it would block the dragon's heavy hits. We went right back in there, and in all honesty, we had a bit of a plan this time around. I managed to make an obsidian path, that way the blocks wouldn't have disintegrated. I honestly could have just used the endstone, but I guess obsidian was the fastest thing that I can use. Not really, but it was the thing that I knew 100% would work. So we used that as a little standpoint, so even if the dragon did directly hit us, it wouldn't break the obsidian blocks. The concept that I was using was very simple. We use the obsidian blocks as a bit of a platform for us to stand on while the dragon is down perched. This way we can hit it from down below. Eventually, we got it down to some pretty low amounts of health. We simply just redid the process. I wanted to use the beds, but honestly, I didn't think we could because we need to place the beds upside down. It was a little bit more complicated and not to mention it's also a big waste of time. So honestly, I was just going to axe it to death. There were a few times that our shield broke, but we instantly just remade a new one. Luckily for us, we had quite a few materials, so that's what we did for that. So here's where things started to go wrong. The dragon was at a really low amount of health, and I wanted to counter the argument that I just brought up by using a bed to, you know, get the final hit on it. And that's exactly what I attempted doing. I placed down the bed, I placed down two cobblestone blocks, I right clicked it, and the dragon was defeated. But in that very process, we were knocked back off of the platform due to the explosion. We looked up upon falling into the endless void and saw that the ender dragon was gone. We have removed the ender dragon from this world. Technically speaking, we did die within the 100 day period because we honestly still had a couple minutes left. Honestly, I personally take that as a win and you guys can choose for yourselves what you think about it.